I'm Luke Alexander, CEO of Nucor Gold with a February update for our investors. Um, maybe I'll just highlight, first of all, uh, I will be making some forward-looking statements as part of this presentation, so I'd encourage you to go to our website and, uh, and read the disclaimer that's there. While you're there, I'd also encourage you to sign up for the various social media platforms that we're uh, active on. We share a lot of content there and, and things that might be um, uh, useful for you to get to know our entity project in Ghana a little bit better, as well as get to know the team in, uh, in more detail. Uh, talking about the team, I think we've got one of the best teams out there for a company of our size, uh, a, a management team and board of, board of directors that has a proven track record of making money for investors. Uh, we're very well backed by institutional investors. We've, we're currently owned about 35%. Uh, by deep pocketed long term focused uh, institutional investors and I think that speaks to the to the team and the asset that we've been, been able to attract that kind of capital. Uh, importantly, the management and insiders of Nucor own 32% of the business so we ultimately think as shareholders first and I think that's important that we're good stewards of your capital. Uh, Ghana, uh, we do view Ghana as um, uh, as a tier one mining jurisdiction. It is Africa's largest gold producer, and we'll get into a bit of detail on that in a couple of slides. We currently have a 1.2 million ounce resource, primarily in the oxide category, so heap leach uh, mining, which is a much lower capex way of mining and uh, a really good resource for us to be building off of. We're currently about 20,000 meters into a 58,000 meter program. This is the largest ever drill program on our, on our property focused on expanding resource as well as making new discoveries. Good tight capital structure, 99 million shares outstanding and no warrants. I think that speaks to the team and the asset that we haven't had to issue warrants to ultimately attract capital to, uh, to grow our company. Looking at the team in a little bit more detail, my background, I spent 15 years on the investment banking side of the business. Uh, 12 of those years, I was in London working closely with a number of very large natural resource investors, a number of them who are investors in Nucor today, advising them on different opportunities in the mining space. Uh, TSX, ASX, AIM listed companies, helping raise money for those companies and advise them on different transaction transactions. That's where I got to know a lot of the board um, who, uh, who, are, who are involved in Nucor today. Uh, Doug Forrester, he's our chairman. He was the CEO of, uh, of New Market. He's a co-founder of Caliber and co-founder of uh, Nucor Gold. He and I worked together for a number of years. He approached me to become CEO of Nucor, uh, at which point I suggested he step up as uh, chairman. And that's when we uh, ultimately relaunched the company. At the time, uh, that was back in May of last year, Greg Smith came back and joined us as full-time VP Exploration. Uh, Greg is a critical part of our team. He was running Caliber uh, up until it became a producing company, at which point he stepped away and came and joined us as full-time VP Exploration. Greg has over 30 years of exploration experience. He's worked on our Enchi project on and off for the last, last 10 years. So he knows the asset as well as anybody out there. Mal Karvaska, uh, she's our VP of Corp Dev and Investor Relations. Mal's got a private equity uh, finance background. Uh, she worked for different private equity groups as well as worked um, uh, for different corporates. So got a lot of experience uh, and is a crucial part of our executive team. Dan Wilson, he's our country manager. Uh, it's important to have social license no matter where you work in the world. Uh, Dan has worked on this project on and off for the past 20 years and, uh, and is, uh, is, is a key member of our team. Uh, some other board members I'll highlight, Blaine Johnson, he's got uh, a track record of, uh, of making shareholders a lot of money. Uh, Doug Hurst, he's uh, been involved in Northern Empire, co-founder of New Market uh, and the board of directors of Caliber. George Salamis, who many of you may know, he's, um, uh, he was the chairman of Integra Gold. He's now the CEO of Integra Resources. So again, very uh, successful track record in the mining sector. Um, ESG, something that's very important to us at Nucor and important to our shareholders. We are guided by uh, a number of the UN sustainable goals, ones that we feel are appropriate for an exploration stage company based in Ghana. Uh, so things that we've done in the past and are doing today, uh, things like donating computers to local schools, installing water wells in, in local communities where they don't have access to, uh, to clean water, as well as upgrading bridges and roads for local farmers to be able to get their product more easily to market. 
COVID is something that, um, needless to say, we're dealing with around the world. In Ghana, we've been very fortunate to not have been um, as negatively impacted uh, by COVID as, as other parts of the world. Uh, but we do have all the kind of policies and procedures in, pe in place to keep our employees, contractors and local communities safe. So daily temperature checks as well as uh, PPE uh, for, for all of our employees, as well as hand washing stations and other, uh, other, other measures in place. Looking at our uh, our capital structure, one thing that I'll um, uh, I'll just highlight here, and, and we've kind of talked about it a little bit, uh, 99 million shares outstanding, so very good um, capital structure from that perspective. We um, uh, are 32% are owned by management and insider, so true shareholder alignment from that perspective. Institutionally owned, 35%. Uh, These are a number or a, or a handful of our current institutions. We currently sit at about 30 uh, institutional investors. These are groups in the bottom left here who I've worked with for the past 10 or 15 years and we're keen to get involved when we uh, relaunch the company. Research um, coverage, uh, we're very happy that within a couple of months of us relaunching, uh, we had five tier one investment banks out of Toronto who initiated on us. I think that um, ultimately uh, uh, speaks to the quality of the team and the asset that we were be able to attract those kind of groups to, uh, to share our vision and ultimately want to get behind the story. Looking at Ghana, um, it's uh, again, uh, a great jurisdiction to be operating in. It is Africa's largest gold producer, producing about 5 million ounces uh, per year. Uh, it's the seventh largest gold producer globally. So with that, you've got a very well-aligned government who, um, who are supportive, uh, uh, supportive of the industry. It's important for their tax uh, for their tax base as well as for jobs in country. We are able to le leverage off of a lot of very skilled labor in Ghana, which obviously um, puts us in a very good position to push our project forward. Looking at where we're physically located, we're in the southwest corner of Ghana. If we look at it uh, a little bit more closely, there's two prolific uh, gold belts that run through Ghana, the Ashanti belt, as well as the Sefwi Bibiani belt. We're located on the Sefwi Bibiani belt, very good neighbors in country. So directly to the north of us, about 50 kilometers, you've got Kinross's Chirano mine that produces about 200,000 ounces per year. To the north of that, you've got uh, the Bibiani mine. Um, you'll see that Resolute actually sold that mine to a Chinese group just before uh, Christmas. And then to the north of that, you've got um, one of Newmont's two producing mines in country, the Ahafo mine. If you look here over on the left hand side, you can see that these are all 5 million plus ounce uh, endowments and ultimately, um, you know, really good good neighbors for us to have uh, in country. Interestingly, to um, give you a bit of sense for uh, how Newmont views Ghana, uh, it actually has 18% of their total global production coming from Ghana. So uh, needless to say, that's a very large amount of, uh, of production and I think it speaks to the quality of the country. Our asset butts up against the Cote d'Ivoire border on the southern end. On the other side of the border, you've got the Afima asset, which Taranga owns. If you follow Taranga, you'll see that they've uh, put out some very positive results on Afima. One of those came out on January uh, 20th, and I'd encourage you to have a look at that. And uh, great to have our neighbors to the south, ultimately, um, uh, just as excited about some of the geology that we share between our properties. In terms of uh, the Enchi project itself, 216 square kilometers in size, so a very large, um, large land package from the northern end to the southern end. It stretches 40 kilometers in length. Where the mineralization sits on uh, on our project, as well as other uh, projects, including Chirano Mine and the Bibiani Mine, is you've got the main Bibiani Shear, which I've just highlighted here, which runs from north to south. And then coming off of that main shear, you've got second and third order splays. We've highlighted those with these dotted lines running through our property. If you if you add up the total strike length of that that shearing that goes through our property, you've got about 100 kilometers of strike length. So real district scale opportunity for us to explore. We've identified 25 targets to date on our property, of which we've only drilled on six, and three of those six host our current um, resource of 1.22 million ounces. 
Looking at that 1.22 million ounces, that's made up of made up of about 49,000 um, uh, or 50,000 meters of drilling RC and diamond drilling. So, needless to say, the uh, the 58,000 meter program that we've got going at the moment is a significant program and something that um, we think will be very additive to the uh, to the resource um, going forward. Um, in terms of uh, the drilling that we've done so far and the uh, and the overall 58,000 meter program, it is uh, an RC and diamond uh, program. All of the drill results that we've released um, to date uh, are our drill results from our 2020 drilling. So if we look at our existing resource areas, Boeing, Seum, and Niam, uh, you can see Boeing is a 530,000 ounce resource. We've released uh, 51 holes to date. Seum sits at about 535,000 ounces. We've released 25 holes from Seum. Niam sits at 155,000 ounces and we've re released eight holes to date. All of that drilling is step out drilling and we think will ultimately add to the overall resource at all three of those deposit areas. We've also gone back and drilled some previously drilled areas, uh, including Quachicrom and Kojina Hill. Kojina Hill, we put out nine holes last year, and uh, and uh, Quachicrom, we've put out a total of eight holes, nine last year, and another press release um, on uh, on January twenty uh, seventh, which included some uh, some holes from Quachicrom. So, very encouraged by the results from both of those areas, and our view is that Quachicrom will be the next area that we add to our uh, to our global resource, which is currently coming from those uh, three areas that I've talked about. The final area that we've got historical drilling is Irati. Irati is at the northern end of our property. It's about a two and a half kilometer long anomaly. Uh, we have done uh, drilling there about eight or nine years ago. Results uh, from about 10 different holes and we're going to get back up there with a diamond rig to follow up on that drilling uh, in, uh, in, in Q1 of this year and looking forward to getting some results from Irati. The next areas that we're focused on are, are areas that have never been drilled before. So areas like Nequanta, Seum South, as well as uh, some other anomalies, which I'll, uh, I'll talk about in a bit more detail on, uh, on, some, on some other slides. In terms of things that work well from an exploration perspective, airborne geophysics, um, we've run across the entire property and, and, and work well to identify where, where these anomalies sit. Uh, soil sampling, uh, we've done tens of thousands of soil samples across our overall project. And uh, if you kind of compare these two maps and line them up, you can see that the soil samples and the anomalies line up very well. Looking at our resource areas like Boeing, Niam, as well as some of our targets, um, uh, Quachicrom, Nequanta, Tokasia, when you look at the soil sample map on the right hand side, you can see that those uh, line up very well from that perspective. So that's helped us identify a number of these targets. While I'm on this slide, maybe I'll highlight Seum South. If you look on the uh, map on the left, right at the bottom, you can see that Seum South is actually our largest anomaly, about two and a half by three and a half kilometers in size. Comparing that to the soil samples that have been done on the uh, on the map on the right, you can see that uh, they line up very well. We are in the process of doing about a kilometer and a half, two kilometers of trenching at Seum South, and we're getting ready to drill that for the first time ever in Q1 of uh, of, uh, of this year. So very excited to get down there and uh, and get drilling. Looking at this map, this is our uh, our attempt at really highlighting the district scale opportunity that we've got at um, <clears throat> at Enchi. Uh, again, it's a very large land package. We've identified 25 targets um, uh, to date. Looking at the pyramid on the right, this is our kind of systematic um, approach to exploration and, and how we ultimately de-risk the exploration and, and, and pick our targets to, be, to, to create as much shareholder value as possible. So at the top of the pyramid, you've got our three deposit areas, which I've talked about, Boeing, Seum, and Niam, which make up that 1.2 million ounces. Uh, the, the About 75% of the results we've released to date are from those areas. They're all step out holes and we're ultimately looking to expand the overall size of the resource at all three of those areas. 
I've talked about some of these previously drilled areas. We've put results out from our 2020 drilling at both Kojina Hill and Quachikram with the goal of moving all of these areas up the pyramid and into that resource category with, with uh, additional drilling. And as I've mentioned, I think Quachikram will probably be the next one that we move up the pyramid and into that deposit category. Below that, we've got areas like um, Nequanta, Tokasia. I've talked about Seum South in a little bit uh, of detail. These are all areas that we've done a lot of work on, but have never drilled. And we're very excited for the first time ever to drill these with, again, the goal of moving them into that drill tested category and over time, getting them up the pyramid and into, uh, into deposits and, and add to our overall resource. Below that, we've got about another 15 or 20 different targets that we've identified across our property. We will continue to do mapping, soil sampling, trenching work on these areas and ultimately prioritize which ones we think are, uh, are, are, are the best to ultimately move up into that advanced target area with the ultimate goal of over time drilling them to, uh, to add to our overall resource. So lots of uh, opportunity for us to, uh, to drill, to make new discoveries, but to also significantly add to our resource at, uh, at existing resource areas. One thing I'll just um, uh, touch on while on this um, on this slide because I think it highlights it nicely is um, we've uh, we've uh, we've got very good infrastructure at our project so uh, running through the <clears throat> center of our property where I just drew that red line we've got a paved road you can drive 110 kilometers or 60 miles an hour along that road there's a power line which runs alongside it it takes you to the town of Enchi. And she's got about 15,000 people. So it's got all the kind of support services that we could want within the town and community to support our project, but it's also sitting far enough away that we don't ever anticipate issues in the future from a, uh, from a development and production perspective. Our core shack um, sits right alongside that uh, paved road, uh, about a 10 minute drive down a dirt road, you're sitting on top of our, uh, our Boeing deposit, another 10 minutes from there, you're at Seum, and then throughout the rest of our, our property, we've either got dirt or gravel roads, which give us very good access to our, uh, our targets. So infrastructure wise, um, we're very well positioned, about a uh, four hour drive in this direction here takes you to uh, Tarqua. Tarqua is a very large mining um, uh, hub uh, within Ghana. We've got our assay lab sitting in, um, in Tarqua. They've been turning our assays around in about two or three weeks, which to put that in perspective, we've been hearing a lot of stories about uh, companies waiting 10, 12, 14 weeks. So that's been great for us. And it's meant that we've been able to adjust our drill program on the fly. So some of the holes that we released at the end of January uh, from um, uh, from uh, Tokasi, uh, not Tok from um, uh, Quachikram, sorry, um, are actually follow up holes that uh, uh, from holes that we drilled back in uh, in October, November. So great to be able to adjust our, our program on the fly. Um, as well, if we look in about a four hour drive, four or five hour drive in this direction, you get to the town of uh, Kumasi, which is another uh, fairly large mining hub within, uh, within Ghana. We've got um, one of our mining contractors who's based out of there, headquartered for all of West Africa out of, um, out of Kumasi and, uh, and um, <clears throat> ultimately, um, um, uh, you know, that that's a nice benefit for us in terms of if we ever have any issues from a uh, from a from a drilling perspective, they can have parts on site and, and be servicing the rigs within uh, a half a day. So great infrastructure in country and, and a, num a number another one of the reasons why I always talk about Ghana being a tier one jurisdiction to operate in. Looking at our three deposits now in a little bit uh, more detail, this is from our um, resource update that we put out, uh, the 1.2 million ounce resource update that we put out in September, October of last year. Um, you can see the, uh, the three pits here at Boeing, Seum, and Niam. All three of these areas remain open along strike, um, and we are continuing to step out and drill along strike. I will highlight here at Boeing um, and, and also specifically at uh, Seum where I've uh, I just highlighted around those blue arrows. Those were large gaps that um, were sitting within our drilling. The news release that we put out at the beginning of January, I think it was January 7th for Boeing, uh, was, uh, was a lot of results that were step out drilling into this gap area. 
as we expected, the mineralization continues right through this area. And, um, you know, over time, our view is that this is just going to become one large pit. So nice um, low hanging fruit opportunity for us to add ounces at Boeing, as well as at Seum, that press release that we put out um, at the end of January. You'll see that uh, a lot of the results are from this gap zone. Again, all step out holes through that gap area they've proved that there's mineralization in that in that area there and uh, over time we're going to expect this to become one large pit so again a nice low hanging fruit opportunity for us to do uh, to, to add to add ounces at our um, uh, at our entry project the other um, thing I'll talk about is uh, is the opportunity at depth. So, um, you know, we've talked about expanding our resource by stepping out, drilling out these gaps, as well as going after some new areas that we've never drilled before. The other kind of prong, um, you know, within the uh, uh, or approach that we're taking from an exploration perspective is for the first time ever to start drilling at depth. So if you look at our current 1.2 million ounce resource, 95% uh, of it sits in the oxide and transitional zones. Um, what that means is that it's heap leach material. Uh, heap leach mines are a must, much less uh, capital intense way of, um, uh, of mining. So that's been deliberate that we've historically focused on kind of drilling the near surface oxides. Uh, and to date, we've only drilled down to an average of about 50 or 60 meters. So really only scratched the surface from that perspective with our maximum vertical depth of about 250 meters. One of the things when you look at these greenstone hosted um, deposits, and if you look at a longitudinal section of our Enchi project and compare that to the Tranel mine, where you start to see these deposits really uh, double and triple in size is when you're drilling uh, down below the oxidization level, which we've highlighted here by the dotted line, both at um, uh, at our entry project and Chirano. And you can see that once you get into the sulfides and drilling deeper, that these, uh, these greenstone hosted deposits really typically start to extend at depth. So for the first time ever, we're starting to put some deep holes into this project. We had a diamond rig arrive in December of, uh, of 2020, and it has started to drill some deeper holes down to kind of 250, 350 meters. So in the grand scheme of things, still not deep by any means, but for us, relative to the 50 or 60 meters that we've drilled down to on average to date, these are quite deep holes. And our goal is ultimately to continue expanding the pits um, deeper as well as uh, making some uh, some additional uh, discoveries at depth and start to kind of prove up the similar model to what we've seen at Chirano as well as up at Bibiani where these things uh, typically extend at depth. Chirano for, uh, for instance, they've now drilled down to about 1.2, 1.3 kilometers with, um, with uh, mining down to about 750 meters. So if you squint closely enough and look, you can see a bunch of underground workings there at Paboesi where they're down to about three quarters of a kilometer and about down to 500 meters at, um, at uh, Aquaba. So that's a real opportunity for us drilling at depth. So just to kind of recap, expanding resource by stepping out at Boeing, Seum, Niam. Uh, we filled in uh, some of those gaps where we think that'll add resource. And then also going back and doing follow-up drilling at Quachicrom, Cochina Hill, and Arati with the goal of moving those areas into or towards the resource um, category. Drilling for the first time ever at areas like Seum South, Nequanta, Tokasia, which doesn't even sit on this map, look to make some new discoveries at those areas as well. So a multi uh, multi pronged um, exploration approach that we think is uh, is is the best way to ultimately create value for our shareholders. So just to recap, um, top tier management team who's incredibly well aligned through our 32% ownership in the business. So we ultimately think uh, as shareholders first and like to think of ourselves as good stewards of shareholder capital. Nice tight capital structure, 99 million shares outstanding and, uh, and no warrants. Um, we, uh, we feel that Ghana is a tier one jurisdiction and hopefully you, uh, you agree with that after some of the points that we ran through talking about the, uh, the country. 
good solid um, 1.2 million ounce resource for us to grow off of. The other thing I'll highlight is that we are putting out a, an updated PEA. We'll put that out at the end of Q1, beginning of Q2. That will incorporate the 1.2 million ounce resource that we um, uh, we put out last fall, and uh, we think that will create a further underpinning of value for the for the company. So with that, um, I'll once again encourage you to uh, go to our website, um, go to the various social media platforms that you follow, uh, and I'd encourage you to follow us there. We put out lots of good content, and we're always keen to engage with our shareholders and prospective shareholders. So if you ever want to learn more about Nucor, please feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to um, try to answer any of your questions. Thank you very much. <music>